when I read that judgment this afternoon, Honorable Speaker, I was left wondering and asking myself, does it mean then that all acts of parliament passed by this house post 2010? Then are uh, also annality in law and unconstitutional because there is not a single act of parliament enacted by this house and even by the other house that has not had amendments in third reading. And those amendments have never gone back to the people for public participation. That is a fallacy, Honorable Speaker, of that judgment today by the Court of Appeal, with all due respect to the learned judges. But as, a, as learned as the judges are, Honorable Speaker, we must now start asking ourselves whether we are in a constitutional democracy or what kind of governance structure we have in this country. But surely there are many other laws that Parliament has passed since 2010 and since 2022 that have not been challenged in the court of law and they have passed muster and they are fine. Um, is it only a problem when the court rules against uh, Parliament? Um, yeah, because Yvonne, you but need then to look here, at the reason. Yeah, yeah the reason why the, the yeah. court, when they were delivering the ruling, the three judges, uh, Kathrima Minotti, Agnes Mulgo, and John Motivo, the reasons they gave was that they, they, the, the, the act in itself failed to consider views of the public on various sections. They did not conduct public participation when they introduced it. They introduced new sections. And, 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 and we are lucky, we always keep saying we have a beautiful document, we have a beautiful, uh, have a beautiful uh, constitution that sets out all these steps on what you're supposed to do, why you finance, act, introduce the act, in the bill in parliament, in a debate, there are amendments, 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 there but when the court rules and says, why are you faulting that court? Why are you f f f faulting the judiciary? Mm. And it's interesting, Yvonne, when some of this, uh, the members of parliament were talking, they even threats of, oh, we'll withdraw some of the funding from the judiciary yeah. because of doing the right thing. Mm. The judiciary was doing the right thing. But then now, uh, you look at what now... Uh, Declaring the Finance Act 2023 unconstitutional null and void means, mm. I mean, because of what it means to them, motorists and high income earners. Actually, wana ni wala mbawa wata wa hu 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 but then now, when I come in, say, okay, of course, there's a there's a, an option of going to court to try and stop this. Yeah. Yeah. And probably someone may go to court and say, mm. hold on. Yeah. Yeah. You cannot implement this because of ABCD. Because, uh, okay, Sherry na Trusuk fanya hivyo. But in the meantime, the people were celebrating and thinking, hold up. Sile pesa mbuzu tukot nakatwa, the taxes mm. that went up. Mm. Yeah. The beya bidha mbo ilipanda kwa sababu mulipandisha VAT on, on petroleum products. There are those who went, either, there was the, the excise tax on telephone calls and data from 20% to 15%. Right. Kwa sababu sheria na taratibu hazikufuatwa. This is why parliament and the government is seeing what it is seeing now. The amount of money that was collected in that period yes what water would issue kwa sababu taxes ambazo walikatwa ilishapita. The housing uh, the affordable housing ilikuwa imetolewa ikawekwa kando ikakuwa sheria on its own. But remember that was an added mzigo on the tax pay ambayo already ameongezewa. Yeah. It was another 1.5% imepanda which is uh, well and good. But people are celebrating this saying well kama taratibu hazikufuatwa hela za watu zimekuwa zikikatwa ile imeenda imeenda yeah. but going forward sheria ifuatwe and it should be a lesson iwe funzo that if you want to pass laws use the right procedures do what needs to be done so that you don't see this but they seem not to learn. Yeah. What does this mean, Sam, in terms of, uh, you know, where we are? I mean, I think uh, 
remember, Finance Act 2023 now, um, and, and that judgment, by the way, uh, the orders take uh, effect, effect immediately. immediately yeah. um, and like Jamila says, uh, they have every right to appeal, and they could, though we haven't heard of a notice of appeal yet, but uh, that is still within their right. And this would be to the Supreme Court, right. which would then now um, have uh, the final say uh, in this matter. But look at this administration, Finance Act 2023, that was itself quite controversial. We had the big conversation. Was that the very first that we indeed had? Yeah, it was. Um, you know, here at Citizen TV of the Finance Act and, and, and everything that happened around that. And then you have a Finance Act 2024 that many said was just going to add on to the burden of Finance Act 2023 that was outright, outrightly rejected by the people, this time not even the courts. Mm. Where does this leave the government with respect to revenue mobilization? And this is the additional. We know we already have the four um, pieces of legislation that guide our taxation from Income Tax Act, excise duty tax as well. Um, but certainly amendments to the Finance Act give an administration added revenue. And sometimes these are for very specific projects that they want to uh, you know, undertake or development issues they want to undertake for that financial year. So we're still okay in terms of, you know, we have laws in place that are guiding our tax collection measures. But I would imagine this would be a great setback when we're still just dealing with one, uh, 2024, that in itself had repercussions, such as the Moody's ratings. Now you go back to 2023, and a reminder that both acts, uh, 2023 and 2024, um, you know, were heavily influenced by the monies that we took from IMF, which came with certain conditions of fiscal consolidation and revenue mobilization to be able to, I mean, we all know the story. IMF came into the country to sort of rescue us uh, from this heavy commercial debt that we had undertaken. But in the, the midst of that, they had some rather stringent conditions, which some liken to the structural adjustment programs of the 90s. But that was largely based on increasing the Taxes. revenue mobilization which was one of the reasons, by the way, mm -hmm. uh, that they talked about when it came to uh, VAT on fuel products. Not just for 2023, by the way, which was when uh, we had them at 8% and increased that to 16. Even the 8% to begin with was something the IMF had been asking us to do for years, and we kicked the can down the road, including the time when uh, Cabinet Secretary uh, Rotich was at the helm of Treasury. It was something that kept going forward and forward, and they kept saying all of these uh, subsidies that you have, particularly on petroleum and products, that's a good revenue earner because you can imagine the volumes of that you know, collection on a daily basis. And so now here we are with two finance acts back to back right. that I have now been cast out. The... <laughs> cast out. Cast out. Cast out. <laughs> okay. The implication is, is huge mm. because, look, the president has been speaking in the National Treasury as well. That the finance bill 2024 is to give them 344 billion, billion shillings. shillings. The previous Finance Act 2023 was to raise at least 311 billion shillings. That, this is the figure that was circulated um, that time when it was being considered. But of course, it was inclusive of the housing levy. In the housing levy, I had the, cab the cabinet secretary nominee, Ali Sohome, saying that um, the estimates are between 62 and 65 billion shillings every year. Um, well, the Kenya Revenue Authority has not reported how much of housing levy was collected mm. uh, from the Finance Act of 2023 between July 2023 and June 2024 this year. Uh, I mean, which is this year. So, but if you had to take the figure on, on, on its face, 311 minus, say, 60 billion shillings, you're left with about uh, 250 billion shillings. If you had 344 billion shillings, you're talking about 594 billion shillings worth of finance act, or acts or other tax laws uh, that would have helped the government raise up to this. So this is nearly 600 billion shillings. So imagine you're running a government in the year 2022-2023. I think the initial budget was about 3.3 trillion shillings, mm. but that grew to 3.67 trillion shillings in what the control of budget was reporting. So out of 3.67 trillion shillings of budget, then you don't have 600, 600 billion shillings. You go down to just about 3 trillion flat. What does the government do with these losses? Mm -hmm. But also, of importance is the specifics, because the explanation by the court is that there are several clauses that were introduced 
or reviewed by Parliament without going to fresh public participation. Also says that... It's a little sneaky though, isn't it? Yeah. Indeed. My petition. You take a process exactly. through public participation, exactly. people give their views, yeah. and then I'll you go, an and then you add things... I'll give you an example. In so initially, yeah. the housing level was supposed to be 3% yeah. with a cap of 5,000 5, shillings. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But then, eventually, the Finance and Planning Committee came back and said that Kenyans say they do not want the money back because it was supposed to come back to you after seven years. And therefore, they reduced the tax rate to 1.5%, removed the cap, up. you are not going to get it back, but it, 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 it was going to be levied on every other person who is yeah. making a, 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 an income. That proposal was not taken to fresh public participation. But don't confuse it, because this particular question of housing levy, the Court of Appeal did not make a decision on it, because they said the decision by the High Court was based on that the, uh, this decision is discriminatory on people who are salaried. Okay. Mm. There is an affordable housing um, act, act that was passed by parliament. Yeah. So the court of appeal did not consider this. But highlights several clauses that were introduced post the public participation. And even goes ahead to say that parliament owes to the people an explanation mm -hmm. of if there are proposals that came from the public participation. Did you adopt uh, them? Yes. No. If yes, mm -hmm. what are the reasons? Mm -hmm. right. If you did not adopt them, Why? what oh, are the reasons? Yeah. Because you are supposed to be... Uh, transparent. The so they say, the court says, insulating parliament from the obligation to give reasons or justification for rejecting the views of the public is the surest way of rendering public participation yeah. illusory, cosmetic, and a mere formality or public relations exercise which the Supreme Court and this court have loudly declared it is not. Yeah. So of course, the High Court, that time under the leadership of the late Justice Majanja, mm. had found that Parliament was not obligated to come back and report to the people that based on the public participation, this this the, these are the decisions we've made, yeah. and these are the amendments that we're introducing. Mm -hmm. He said they're not obligated. The Court of Appeal is disagreeing and saying, in fact, mm -hmm. they need to do so because then failing to do so would be abusing Article 10 of the Constitution, mm. which talks about governance, um, national values and principles of governance, mm. part of which public participation is a key pillar inside there. So if you do not tell the people why you're doing what you're doing despite the public participation... What's the point? Exactly. Point. Yeah. Yeah. And, and, and those are some of the issues, but it's declaring this in its entirety, right. um, I think, is, is a blow to this administration. Uh, with respect to, um, like you were saying, process and following the law and, um, and, and adhering to the Constitution, even in the process of making laws, which is the irony uh, for Parliament. And I think this sends... Uh, the ball is back in Parliament's court in terms of, again, a very sticky issue. By the way, it's not just with this administration. The issue of public participation has been raised in various cases, even under uh, uh, the previous administration since 2013. The issue of how are we going to, what is the threshold for public participation? Um, to what extent are you bound um, or otherwise, uh, by the views that are given. Uh, some of the views may be mundane. Some of them may be um, a little bit more significant. But what is the weight of that in terms of the reports that we get, for instance, out of parliamentary committees by the time they are presented on the floor of the House for debate and then final voting? To what threshold does, is it... 30% of, of the process is then uh, made up of, yeah. of public participation. And recall uh, that parliamentarians are there for uh, one key role, which is representation. So they're there on behalf of the people that elected them to that position. position yeah. um, and so one of the things that we've not been able to flesh out is particularly that, um, the threshold of public participation and how that is adopted in our lawmaking processes. And by the way, it's not just with laws. It is also with uh, you know, regulations uh, that are passed uh, in this country. For instance, um, there was the one on uh, the levy. The road, the road maintenance, maintenance levy, levy. yes. Right. Uh, and, and once again, even the manner in which um, the public participation uh, was, was, was conducted, it was conducted in their offices rather than in a public place. It was hard to be able to understand, okay, what time, where, um, how do we access, uh, you know, these particular offices and the views of the people. And their places, Yvonne, not. I'm sorry, I'm interrupting. Yeah. I think only two people showed up. Yes. Only two people showed up. The right. process didn't even happen. Right. But then at the end of it all, the thing was petitioned. Yeah. There was a letter. But, but the interesting yeah. bit is that uh, in as much as the physical public participation hearings were not well attended, yeah. hmm. 
or rather they were not attended, mm. um, for the written submissions, majority of them were opposed yeah. uh, to yeah. the levy. But yeah. I remember the then Cabinet Secretary, Kiptuma Murkum, in saying that um, those that have come have said, as long as, I mean, he said that people do not want the Added. price of fuel to go up. Yes. Mm -hmm. Uh, and then he also indicated that they are saying, if you want to add, you add, but don't touch the price of fuel. Eventually, of course, we, 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 we don't know what the actual record is, mm. but eventually what happened is that um, EPRA, yeah. we learned from their price release, yes, yeah. um, the pump yeah. price yes, yes. for the it next one, one month, yes, yeah. and they indicated you could see. They didn't even write it in their statement. No, yeah. it it's, was in their when computation. You what yes. the tabulation of price mm. of uh, uh, petrol, diesel, and kerosene at the pump, that what exactly it is that you see that um, the RMLF, the fuel mm. levy, the road maintenance levy has actually gone up by seven shillings. Yeah. Obviously, if you recall how it happened, is that the finance bill 2024, there was a lot of opposition. Mm. Uh, the government, under the leadership of President William Ruto, the members of parliament had a parliamentary group meeting at State House, and they yielded in saying that you're going to withdraw several measures, including the motor vehicle tax and others, tax on bread as well. Mm. Then after that, we see the cabinet secretary, Kim Juma Murukumin, appearing before the same finance and planning committee and telling them, I need your assistance because the road maintenance levy has not been raised since yeah. 2016, yeah. Yeah. yet inflation has gone up. The prices of other commodities have gone up, including mm. the price of a litre of petrol mm. uh, or fuel, if you like. And then after that, we saw the finance and planning committee retreating and writing a report and introducing a new clause, yeah. clause 66, yeah. and saying that actually road maintenance levy will be reviewed by seven shillings. Mm -hmm. Later on, they realized you can actually not you can't. amend, yeah, you can't amend the, road the road maintenance, maintenance levy, levy through the Finance through the Act, finance yeah. act yeah. Um, taking it to Parliament, and that was abandoned. That's how Kipchumba Murukumen, the and Kenya Roads the, Board, yes. came up with a mechanism to raise public participation for people to give their comments. But eventually what happened after that, I mean, there's no accountability of yeah. What did people say? And how did it Keep your welcome and indicated in a press conference. But what is the reason for introducing yeah. the seven shilling increment? There's no justification there. And I think that's what the Court of Appeal is saying. Right. There has to be accountability of right. that process. And why not then formally announce it and say, following the public participation <laughs> exercise, we received views. We have now resorted to increasing the road maintenance levy yeah. by seven shillings. Yeah. Uh, and again, you know, it is these small things that happen that really erode trust and seem disingenuous and dishonest. And, and quite frankly, there's, there's no other there's no better word I can find for it other than it being sneaky uh, and really it's just a slap in the face but, but uh, give it to, to them. persons who there was a gazette notice on 10th of July a day before the cabinet was dismissed right yeah again it's but it Chine came to life Chine Chine it came after to life the after the yes. 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 Of fear, yeah, 10th of July yeah yeah. yeah 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 yeah. So after questions are raised. There you go. Putting the cart before the horse. If there's one thing, I think one big discussion we need to have right now is the threshold of public participation and the principle of this, uh, because far too many questions have been raised about this and the way we're making laws in this country. Let's take a break. We come back with our final words of the night here on News Gang.